give us of the thoughts and the actions that fell short. Forgive us, God, for going outside of your will for our own plans or going outside of your word with our own plans. Forgive us, Father God, on this morning. We thank you, Father God. touch the leadership team, you touch the members of the Way Church, you touch all who are present and all who may be watching online, Father God. We need a touch from you this morning, Father. There's so much happening around the world this morning, Father God. We need a touch from you. We need to feel your power, Father God. We need to hear your voice this morning, Father God. Father God, so that what's happening around us won't get on the inside of us, Father. We thank you, Father. We love you. We honor you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Let the people of God say amen. 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 Well, put your hands together. 
put your hands together. We can do better than that. Somebody say, we came in expecting God to do miracle signs and wonders.
in his blood and what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough I trust in God my Savior
Yeah. 
If it's your mama, I don't care if it's your baby mama. There are people that will not come through for you. But somebody say, I serve a God that does not do that. I don't know what you've been waiting on. I don't know what you've been looking for God to do. But somebody encourage somebody say, He does not fail. He does not fail. He is a God that fails not. And we honor Him in this place. The enemy thought. That death had consumed our Savior. But somebody say he does not fail. Ah, oh, that's good news this morning. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We serve a God that does not fail. Tell somebody happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Hey, listen, I'm not here to, I'm not here to preach in this moment. But somebody, we had two, a couple that said that they would love to dedicate their child on today. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> on the day that we celebrate our risen king, somebody say he's the giver of life. He's the giver of life. We want to take this time to dedicate a child. Is Jamal and Vionique here this morning? Are they here this morning? Okay, they're not here this morning. Okay, come on up here, be a neat. Huh? Oh, he sat outside for a second. It's not a problem. I, I, I do this quite often, and I want us to make sure we understand what baby dedication is. It's not salvation. Somebody say it's not salvation. She, this baby is not of age to declarate, to make a declaration of faith in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But when we dedicate babies, we're saying that we're setting aside our babies for our Lord. Somebody say setting aside. So it's not salvation, but what we say is, God, we want to set this baby aside for you. Hannah said this. Hannah said, if you would give me a male child. All the days of your his life will be dedicated unto you. Somebody say setting aside. So this morning we set aside Jace, baby Jace, to the Lord. And here's what we're saying, and I'm going to share this with the family. I know Jamal is coming in. But what we're saying is that this baby is reserved for God. Somebody say reserved for God. And they can come on up at this time. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate them really quickly. Hallelujah. One of the things I love about this couple, and if we could just take it down just a bit, I had the, the unique privilege to marry these two. Um, yeah, beautiful couple in the Lord. Listen, they didn't know me. I didn't know them. But Vionique cousin hooked us up and we got connected and now they're a part of our church family. They've been coming, Vionique, and it's always bringing, bringing the children. And I know Jamal is traveling with work, but they're a part of this church family and God knows how to order the steps of God's people, amen. 
So be unique and Jamal, if you would just turn to me, I'm going to be sharing this with the congregation. But I said this, that children are reserved for the Lord. In other words, Hannah declared in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, remember me and forget, forget not your maidservant, but will you give your maidservant a male child? Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of my life. In other words, we declare on this morning that Jace is reserved for the plans of God. Somebody say, the plans of God. We say that Jace is reserved for the use of God. Somebody say, the use of God. And then we're also saying on this morning that Jace is reserved for the glory of God. Somebody say, the glory of God. I don't know about anybody else, but there can be children that do not follow the plans of God. There are children that not, are not doing the use of God. And there are children that are not giving God glory. But on this morning, we say J Jace will do so. Somebody say he's reserved for God. And the other thing we're going to say is that, that Jace is also a reward from God. So I want to say this to all my parents, no matter how bad y'all babies is, somebody say it's a gift from God. And I say this quite often, this is why this is critical. If you don't remember that your children are a reward from God, when they start acting up, you're going to forget that God gave you them children. Somebody say, God gave me that baby. I'll be trying to na negotiate with God because my kid is bad, y'all. But I have to remind myself that they're a reward from God. I'm talking about Skylar. And she by eight months. That girl bad. The Bible says in Psalm 127, verse 3, the Bible says children are a gift from, a, from the Lord. They are a reward from him. So not only do these children and Jace belong to God, but Jace is a blessing from God. We know that only God is the giver of life. So on this morning, when days get difficult, when he wake you up in the midnight hour, you got to remember that that maybe is a reward from God. Somebody say a reward from God. And not only that, we're saying on this morning that that which is reserved from God and is a reward from God requires the responsibility of a faithful steward. Did y'all hear what I just said? Whenever we know something is reserved from God and a reward from God, then I have a responsibility. Somebody say a responsibility. So these parents on this morning saying that they're going to steward Jace in the way that he should go. That's, this is why the Bible says that we should train children up in the way that they should go. And when they grow older, they won't depart from it. So that means that baby Jace is going to watch what we watch. What we watch. He's going to see what we see. He's going to hear what we say. So somebody say, I've got to be mindful of that. So y'all don't be watching all kind of things with your babies. Don't be saying all kind of things around your babies. This is why babies go to school and cuss. And they can cuss better than some grown folk. And you know why? Because they heard somebody in their home cuss. Did y'all hear what I just said? So in other words, we're saying on this morning that we have to be a reflection of Christ in our baby's life. Somebody say, I have a responsibility. Amen. I want, I want your entire family to come that's with you. Y'all come up here this morning. Because I know this is... I know this might sound cliche, but it really does take a village to raise a child. So we don't want to get it confused and think that the parents have the sole responsibility of raising baby Jace up into the admonition of the Lord. So if y'all can't do me a favor, just turn around and face me. I'm going to ask you some questions. I want to know, do you declare that your child is reserved for God, that they are reserved for his glory, reserved for his use, and reserved for his plans? If you're in agreement, I want all of y'all to say, I do. Okay. It's just like when y'all was on the altar now. Do you declare that your child is a reward from God? Watch this, that through all, somebody say all, circumstances that you will remember that God has blessed you with this child. If you're in agreement, say I do. And do you agree to uphold your godly responsibility concerning baby Jace? That you will raise them to love the Lord, to learn of the Lord, and to live for the Lord. If you're in agreement, say I do. 
Amen. Let's celebrate this baby Chase. And I just want to pray over all of these that are here because it's all of our responsibility. Let's stretch our arms of faith towards this family. Father, we thank you when we honor you. We thank you for baby Chase. We thank you for his life. Thank you, God, that you've already called him before you knew him in his mother's womb. Thank you, God, that this child has been reserved for you. God, we believe, God, that baby Chase is a blessing from the Lord. Now, God, use him for your glory. Use him for your plans. God, use him, God, we pray, that he might do your will in the earth. And God, we thank you now that he is a reward from you. So no matter how difficult parenting might be, no matter the seasons in the journey of parenting, God, we will always remember that you are the giver of life. So God, we will always be mindful that baby Jace is a gift from you. And God, we thank you now for our responsibility. Thank you, God, that you give us the privilege to parent, to have the responsibility to raise baby Jace in the admonition of the Lord. So, God, we thank you, we honor you, God, and we glorify you. And we declare on this morning that he is now dedicated unto you. Somebody give God a hand clap of prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. And anybody with a quick camera, can y'all just scoot down to the middle? Anybody got a phone that we can take a picture of this beautiful couple and baby for me? Um, you can bring the, y'all can bring the table out front. Yeah, that's, that's. The.
was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so So, so No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, no lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the night in I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. Has ever experienced the love of God with the lifting of our hands and the fruit of our lips? Can we begin to bless His name? Come on, right in this moment. He has a love for us that is unexplainable, that is unfathomable.
sitting next to but tell them God loves you tell them God loves you come on embrace someone with the love of God this morning find somebody around you and tell them God loves you the very fact that you're breathing is a sign that God loves you Turn to your seats. Stand up with the word in your hand. I'm going to go quickly to the word of the Lord. I want us to go to Romans chapter 5. So grateful for everybody that's in the house of the Lord this morning. Grateful for the worship team that's in the atmosphere. Thank you, God, for the praise team that makes preaching easy. Thank you, God, for the dance ministry that is preparing the way for the Lord. Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. The Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love. Somebody say love towards us. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And verse number 9 says, much more than having now been justified. Somebody say, I'm justified. By his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. But the good news is, is that God demonstrates his own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Tell your neighbor we're going to minister from this subject. Somebody say, no greater love. No greater love. No greater love. I'm not going to be long, y'all, because I ain't going to get away, get in front of what y'all got on that crock pot. <laughs> the saints still use crock pots, right? <laughs> see, see y'all trying to spend money today. I got some on the crock pot. Thank God for my wife. Listen, I want to minister really quickly from this subject, no greater love. And, and I want to say this. I think one of the most difficult things for many believers to do is to receive the love that God has for us. Because here's how I know. The atmosphere would be a lot different in churches if we understood how to receive the love of God. Nobody would have to beg me to lift my hands. Nobody would have to beg me to lay prostrate before the Lord. Nobody would have to beg me to open up my mouth and utter some, some words of goodness to my God if we understood how to receive. So I say the love of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I don't think we do a good job of receiving the love of God. And here's one of the reasons why I believe many believers find it difficult to receive the love of God is because we lack revelation concerning God's love. Uh, somebody say, I need to understand his love. And here's why I believe many of our earthly encounters with so-called love has made it difficult to embrace God's love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of y'all been in some bad and jacked up relationships. And, and because of these earthly encounters with what people called love, we don't know how to embrace God's love. And I, and I know I'm right about it because many have told us they loved us, yet they deceived us. I don't know about nobody else, but I had some girlfriends back in the day that told me they loved me and they ain't really love me. I ain't understand because I thought I was fine, y'all. But, but, but they, 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 they deceived me. And watch this, there's folk that will say they love you and demean your name. They, they, they'll say they love you in front of your face and talk behind you, behind your back. Y'all know that song, Backstabbers, that that's a little bit too old for some saints. And many have told us they loved us, but secretly have despised us. So, so these earthly encounters with love has made it difficult for us to embrace God's love. Folk told us they loved us but deceived us. Folk told us they loved us but demeaned our name. And folk said they loved us and despised us secretly. 
Because the reality is people will love you today and they'll hate you tomorrow. In other words, what we thought was love was really a lie. Somebody say it was a lie. Mm -hmm. And despite what you may believe, if the majority of the love that you encounter is not genuine, it will cause you to put guards around your heart. Did y'all hear what I just said? When I've experienced so much trauma, so much negative love, what it causes me to do is put guards around my heart. And yes, the Bible says guard your heart, but we shouldn't protect it to the degree where genuine love can never penetrate our hearts. Did y'all hear what I just said? So this is why a lot of folk don't, when real love show up in their life, they don't know how to receive it because they've put barriers around their heart where real love can't enter in. Somebody say, let love in. Yeah, 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 I've got to let love in. And if by default, watch this, we, we won't allow God's love in if we guard our hearts to the degree that real love can't penetrate our hearts. Yeah. And here's the sad reality. When we attempt to compare God's love with our earthly encounters with love. Somebody say it ain't the same. Ain't the same. Yeah, yeah, baby dad love and God love, somebody say it ain't, the same. it ain't the same. We believe that we've sinned beyond God's love. In other words, what we've done, God can't look past. You got folk like that. We believe that we are too stained for God's love. In other words, we're not worthy of God's love. And then we believe that God will snatch his love away because folk will say they love you today and leave you tomorrow. We're not good enough for God to keep on loving us. Somebody say, be careful how you put barriers around your heart. And I need us to understand this. Here's why this is so dangerous as a believer. If you're a believer this morning, it's dangerous because the degree that you embrace God's love will determine the degree that you will love him. Did y'all hear what I just said? The degree that you embrace God's love will determine the degree that you can love him. Somebody say, I need to let God love me. You, you, and watch this, you can't really love folk until you let folk love you. Did y'all catch what I just said? The, the degree that I want to love other folk, I've got to let their love, somebody say, let their love in. I ain't got to be, this, this is why, in, you know, in the, the old R&B songs, they, in old movies, they just used to say, hey, don't hold me accountable for what other folk did to you in your past. Because you're not going to allow me to love you to the degree I want to love you, and you'll never, somebody say, love me back. So, so I've got to embrace God's love because it's going to determine how well I can love him. And here's the other thing I want you to understand. You will never replicate a love that you have re yet to receive nor have revelation concerning. Yeah, yeah. God calls us to repl replicate his love. But if I don't have revelation and if I don't receive it, somebody say, I can't replicate that. Can't replicate. And hear this, I want you to understand what Mark 12, 30 declares to us. It says this, and Jesus says, I'm going to give you this commandment that you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, yeah with all your mind and all your strength. Somebody say, that's how I have to love God. But I need us to understand something this. You can't love another until we receive revelation of God's love in our own lives. So that means I don't even know how to love my neighbor until I receive revelation of God's love. I'll never be able to love my wife like Christ loved the church until I have revelation, somebody say, of God's love. This is why we treat, we treat folks so nasty because we don't understand. Somebody say God's love. God's love. Yeah. So, and watch what John 13, 34 says. So now I'm giving you, somebody say a new commandment. Yeah. Love each other just as I have loved you. Yeah. You should love each other. So if I don't know that God loves me, if I don't receive God's love, if I don't have a revelation of God's love, I can't keep that commandment to love you like God loved me. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is why we backstab folk that's closest to us. I was watching something the other day, and it was a documentary on Netflix, and this man who had been married to his wife, somebody say for eight years. They had two children and one on the way. Somebody say one on the way. Because he did not have a revelation concerning God's love, he killed his entire family. A five-year-old a six-year-old and a 34-year-old, and somebody say, one on the way. 
I don't understand how to love somebody else until I let God's love in. Somebody say, let God's love in. Oh, that's who. Help us on today, God. Therefore, our ability to effectively love one another and to love God will be determined by our ability to embrace God's love in our own lives. And here's the good news concerning God's love. Watch this. He loved us before we loved him. Now, that's good news. I don't know about nobody else. When I was living raggedy, when I was in sin, when I wasn't even thinking about God, somebody say, he loved me. Yeah, yeah. When y'all weren't even thinking about God, he loved you. And we're reminded of this in these words in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ooh, that's good news. This means we did nothing to compel God's love to us, but he loved us void of condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, when I think about the stuff that I did before I got saved, somebody say it should have been another way. I, I should have been somebody baby daddy before I was somebody baby daddy. Hey, hey. Somebody say, he kept me. He kept I don't know about y'all, but he kept me, y'all. Yeah. He kept me. The old saints used to say, ain't nothing open but legs. And y'all know at that time of night. <laughs> ain't somebody say, ain't nothing open. <laughs> ain't nothing open, but God loved me. Thank God for his love. Yeah. And before, watch this, before we decided to pursue or please him, God still loved us. Ooh. That's good news to me, y'all. And this is why there is no greater love. In this Resurrection Sunday, I want to give us revelation concerning God's love so that we can go ahead and eat. We got some good and bads for the kids. But somebody say, I got to understand God's love. Th th this revelation will give us the ability to replicate God's love. And watch this, for God and for one another. Because we can't fulfill God's greatest commandments until we first receive God's compassion. Tell your neighbor, I need you to know how to love me right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tell your other neighbor, I need you to know how to love me right. And I believe through our foundational text, we can know why the sacrifice of Jesus was not just another story, but it was the greatest love story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my prayer this morning is that through our foundational text, we can receive revelation concerning God's compassion so that we can be recipients of God's compassion and replicate God's compassion. I'm going to be out y'all way real quick, y'all. So let's look at the text. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Look at the beginning portion. The Bible says, but God demonstrates his own love towards us. When God embraces us with his love, it has no end. Yeah. Now, that's good news, y'all. When, when God embraces us with his love, somebody say it has no end. I ain't got to worry about God waking up after 15 years of being with me saying I'm gone and out the door. Somebody say God ain't like that. Where you going? Because I'm going too. Somebody say God ain't like that. This is why we're reminded throughout Psalm 136 that his mercy endureth. Somebody say forever. And when we find this word mercy in Psalm 136, it's the Hebrew word chesed. And one definition of this word is unchanging love. Now, that's good news right there. This means even when we're consistent, inconsistent, God's love is consistent. Woo. That means even when we might cut him off, his love does not cut us off. And watch this. Even when we change, God's love does not change. And here's why this is so good. I don't know about nobody else. To know that when I'm inconsistent, God loves it, is consistent. When I cut him off, he won't cut me off. When I change, God won't change. Here's why that is so critical. Because somebody say, I'm fickle. I'm fickle. Now, I don't know about none of y'all, but somebody say, I'm fickle. I'm fickle. Because see, we have some good days and we have some bad days. We love God today and then we hate him tomorrow. I don't want to do people today and I'll do them tomorrow. Don't come over to my house today because I can't do you today. Somebody say, I'm fickle. And I don't know about nobody else, but the pastor is fickle. It be some Sundays I want to come to church and there's other Sundays I want to go to the beach. But even though I'm fickle, God is not fickle. The Bible says that his love does not change. So I said that's good news. Because watch this. There's some days that I make it hard for my wife to love me. Because I could wake up in a good mood one day and in a bad mood the next day. And Serena don't want to have nothing to do with me. But somebody say, God ain't like that. So I can have bad days with God. Now that's good news to me, y'all. 
where I want to cuss folk out and somebody say, God still love me. I really do want to cuss folk out some days. But somebody say, God's love does not change. We can love him today, but by how we let our flesh run wild, we act like we hate him tomorrow. Yet even when we're not faithful, here's the good news. Somebody say, I serve a faithful God. Yeah, he's a God that cannot fail. And that includes his love. Watch, watch what 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13 says. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. That means the days that I mess up, the days where I don't want to read my word, and I don't know about nobody else. There's some days where the pastor don't want to pray. But even when I'm faithless, somebody say, God is faithful. I'm so glad that I, got a, I have a God that loves me that kind of way. And this is why there's no greater love, because God's love, somebody say, is steadfast. steadfast. Consider what our foundational text says. The Bible says, but God demonstrates, somebody say demonstrates, demonstrates. his own love towards us. And the key word in the, this portion of our text is this word demonstrates. This reveals that his love is present tense. In other words, it's not that God loved me yesterday. Somebody say he loves me right now. And one of the most difficult things with a lot of believers is because of the circumstances of life, we don't believe that God loves me right now. Somebody say he loved me right now. This means his love is active. This means his love, watch this, is ongoing. Somebody say he demonstrates. That means God does not stop loving you. Watch this even if you stop loving him. Did y'all hear what I just said? The Bible says God demonstrates. It has an S on the end. That means it's ongoing, it's active. It does not stop. So even when you act like you don't love God, someone say he still love you. This is why, folk, when, when God's hand is on you, you can only go so far. Because someone say his love reaches me. Now that's good news, y'all. I don't know about nobody else. Because I almost went to that person's house, but somebody said, God loved me too much. I, I almost did something that would have got me locked up, but someone said, God loves me too much. Even when you stop loving him, God will not stop loving you. The, and watch this. Here's the good news. The, he is consistently reflecting his love to us. This is critical. Even when you don't feel like God is loving you, he is consistently reflecting his love to us. Someone say, how do I know? How do I know? Here's how I know. The very fact that we have another day of life is a reflection of his consistent love for us. I don't care what you woke up to. If you woke up to just two nickels to rub together, someone say, God still love you. I don't care if you only had a piece of cheese and some bread in your fridge. Someone say, God still love you. I don't care if you ain't got nobody to call but one person on that phone, but you woke up. Somebody say, God still loves you. The very fact that I'm in this place is the fact that God loves me. And I'm going to give you Bible. Some say he's going to give you Bible. What, watch what Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 through 23 says. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. So this means every new day that I see is a new display of God's love for me. Did y'all hear what I just said? And watch what a lot of believers do. We complain when we wake up and we think our situations have not changed. The very fact that God called you to wake up. Somebody say he loves you. And here's the good news is the Bible says it's better to be, watch this, a, a, um, a dog rather than a dead lion. In other words, as long as I've got breath in my body, somebody say God still got time. Woo, that means God can change it around. Somebody say he can do it suddenly. Yeah, so here's a word of wisdom. This means God's love for us is not determined by the situations in our life, but his love is determined by the new day I see. Because many believers, here's what we do. We assess God's love by what we are going through. So if we're experiencing lack, we believe that we lack God's love in our lives. But somebody say the devil is a lie. That's a trick of the enemy. And watch this. It's important to note that many times God is attempting to get his love to you when you are going through. 
Somebody say, we don't like that. What, what God is really trying to do, we love to complain, God, why you got to be going through this? Why I got to deal with these situations? Why I got to deal with these folks on my job? Why folks so nasty to me? Why nobody don't look out to, for me? In other words, when we're going through, many times God is attempting to get his love to us. I'm going to give you Bob because it sounds good, but it don't feel good. Watch what David declared in the latter portion of Psalm 18, 19. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Somebody say he loved me. And if we can be honest, many of us really don't know God's love to the degree until he has to lift you out of some stuff. Don't don't tell me how much God loves you and your life has been a cakewalk. Much of what we know about God's love and when, when he has to lift us out of something. I don't like talking to folk that ain't been through nothing because you don't really know the God that I serve because you don't had your, your life has been a bed of roses. Your life has been all that in a bag of chips. Somebody say, I need to know by some folk that been through some stuff. Yeah, because those are the folk that know God's love when God has to lift you out of stuff. And watch this, it's good when God got to lift you out of stuff that you got yourself into. All right. That's a whole nother type of love. Thank God that you got me out of some stuff that I got myself into. I I say this quite often, and I don't want to take up too much time. But watch, when I was um, when I was um, graduating high school, I got a scholarship to run track and play football at a school in Nebraska. And one of the things that ended up happening to me is that I thought I had a baby. Somebody say he thought he had a baby. So for four years, it was this young man who called me son. So I came home, lost my scholarship, had to come back home because I wanted to take care of my responsibilities. Just like I told Bianica Jamal that that you have a responsibility. At 18, I realized that I had a responsibility. And I say this to say that I found out four years later that that baby wasn't mine. I know that might seem, it is a shame. It is a shame. But here's what God protected me from. 18 years of something that did not belong to me. My whole life would have been different if I had a child and the trajectory of my life would have been a lot different. It's different when God can lift you out of some stuff that I got myself into. Because it wouldn't have been no problem if I wasn't trying to be in something that I shouldn't have been into. If y'all know what I'm talking about. Somebody say, God kept me. Oh, that's good news, y'all. And watch this. The good news is that God's love does not get tired of pulling us out of stuff. And here's why this is significant. Because you will endure as a believer many afflictions. Somebody say many afflictions. That Psalm 34, 19 says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God, somebody say delivers me. And then watch this. In this world, you're going to face much trouble. John 16, 33 says, in this world, you'll face much trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. And watch this. Job 14 and 1 says, man born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. So God's love never gets tired of pulling us out of trouble. Somebody say, that's good news. I serve a God whose love is steadfast. And watch this. Don't take me to, uh, because I don't want them to go sleepy. I don't need the saints to be sleepy. I appreciate you. But watch this. Not only does God continually demonstrate his love, but his love is also directed towards us. Somebody say it's directed towards me. Watch what our text says. God demonstrates his love, his own love. Somebody say toward us. This means I don't have to fight for God's love. Y'all know we get in a lot of, we, we think that God is looking out for other folk and not looking out for us. Somebody say his love is directed towards me. Even when it does not look like he's moving, somebody say God is moving. His love is towards us. You ain't got to fight for his love. You ain't got to compel God to love you. Somebody say it's directed towards me. And that's... Y'all ever had a grandma who make you feel like you the favorite grand trial? Yeah. That's how God is. She got by the whole gang of, of grandchildren. And all the grandchildren think they the favorite. In other words, God's love is so massive that he can direct intentional love, somebody say, towards all of us. Ooh, thank, somebody say, thank God for his love. 
And this is why Jeremiah 31, 3 says, yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And this is why there is no greater love. Some say his love is steadfast. Now let's look at the next portion of the text. The Bible says, in that while we were sinners, here's the good news. His compassion extends beyond our carnality. Yeah. I want to say this and say this again. His compassion extends beyond our carnality. Somebody say, what are you trying to say? Somebody say, what are you trying to say? In other words, God loves us despite of us. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know about nobody in, in, in this place, but I got some stuff in me that don't look real good. Right. I got some stuff in me that y'all don't even want to see. I got some stuff in me that if y'all saw, y'all wouldn't want me to be y'all pastor. But the good news is that God loves me despite of me. Tell your neighbor he loves you despite of you. In other words, this means we don't have to be perfect for God's love to pursue us. Notice what our foundational text says. God demonstrates his love towards us that while we were still, somebody say sinners. This is what the songwriter meant when he says that the blood can reach you to the highest mountain and the lowest valley. No matter where I find myself, somebody say God's love can reach me. Oh, that's good news, y'all. Because what the enemy wants you to do is to condemn yourself. But somebody say God's love can still reach me. That means no matter where sin takes us, his love knows how to reach us. Now that right there is good news to me. No matter where sin takes me, God's love can reach me. There is no setback, there is no stain, there is no sin that God's love can't reach. And here's how I know. Watch what 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all, somebody say all, all. unrighteousness. And here's what I'm trying to say. This means his compassion even in our sins, can reach us if we confess. Yeah. Somebody say, if I confess. If I confess. Now that's critical to understand because just because his love abounds our sin does not mean it gives us an authority to live in sin. Right, right, right. Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. Just because God's love abounds sin does not give us authority to live in sin. Because yeah. I don't need nobody saying, Pastor Keith said, I can just be in sin and God gonna still love me. Somebody say, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. And one of the reasons, watch this, that his compassion does not find us is because in, in carnality, is because many believers don't like to confess. Somebody say, confess your stuff. If you want God to reach you in your sin, somebody say, confess your stuff. Yeah, and, and don't, allow, don't allow folk to condemn you. Because folk will write you off because of what you've done. But somebody say, God ain't like that. They ain't got no heaven or hell to send you to. Somebody say, God ain't like that. And watch this. You really can't let folk send you to hell because you don't want to confess what you've done so that you might receive God's love. Ooh, that's good news, y'all. Who many believers don't like to confess because his love will re reach you. Watch this. If you repent. Somebody say, all I got to do is repent. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm so glad that his love will reach me and all I have to do is repent. Yes. And this is why there's no greater love because his love abounds sin. In other words, somebody say his love is greater than our sin. Notice what the latter portion of the New Life version of Romans 5.20 says, but where sin spread, God's loving favor spread all the more. This means at the presence of sin, God produces an even greater presence of his love. Many times, the place that God has reached us the most is when we found ourselves, some might say, in sin. Yeah, in sin. I, didn't, I, I got saved at a revival, and the preacher was preaching about hell, and I was so scared, I wanted to give my life to Christ. In other words, I knew that God loved me so much despite what I was in, he said, I'm going to give you a way out. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, thank God for that. And this is not, and watch this. This is love not because God puts up with our sin, but he is patient with us in our sin. A lot of folk, like I said, will write you off. A lot of folk will give up on you. But somebody say God is patient. God is patient. 
Second Peter chapter three, verse nine declares, the Lord is not slow in doing what he promised. The way some people understand slowness, but God is patient with you. He does not want anyone to be lost, but he wants all people to change their, change their hearts and lives. This means God's compassion for us, even when we are in sin, is so that we might change our hearts and lives. So in other words, we make God's love be in vain. Soraya, put, turn that phone off. Hey, Kaden and, and Juju, turn that phone off and sit down. In other words, we make God's love be in vain when we don't change our hearts when it, his love reaches us in sin. Yeah. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. That's why I say y'all got to pray for my kids because my kid is bad. <laughs> I had to talk to them about Easter. I say, what is Easter about? I had to give them a Bible study lesson this morning. So if God is going to be patient with us, somebody say, put away sin. Somebody say, put away sin. And here's a word of wisdom. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to help us put away some sin this morning. I believe one of the greatest demonstrations of God's patience with us and his love for us despite our sin is that God does not make public what we, the sin we've done in private. One of, one of his greatest demonstrations, that's going to be some stuff. Somebody say, I'm going to have to take that to the grave. <laughs> that God does not make public the sin I've done in private. I'm so glad about that because some of y'all would say Pastor Keith is not saved. <laughs> but somebody say he's just patient with me. He's just patient with me. Because watch what 1 Peter 4 and 8 declares. Love will cover a multitude of sins. I don't know about anybody else, but the very fact that he will not make public the sins that I've done in private should make me put away sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say he's patient with me. Because here's why, if you continue and embrace your sin, despite God's love designed to embrace you, your sins might get exposed. If you keep embracing your sin when God's love is trying to embrace you, he just might expose your sin. Somebody say, put away that sin. Listen. I'm, I'm going to try to make this plain because I know a lot of y'all watch YouTube and y'all on social media. Y'all wonder why a lot of stuff come out years later. Yeah. That stuff with R. Kelly, that stuff with P. Diddy. You be thinking, why, why? that's years ago. Why nobody ain't say that nothing about that years ago? Somebody say God is patient with us. Yeah. If, if we could look back at our life and look back at some of them years, thank God we ain't got no name like P. Diddy or T.D. Jakes. But, but somebody say God is being patient with me. Yeah. Being patient with me. Like, God, no, that was going on 30 years. God was being patient. And because we did not embrace God's love, he will expose our sin. And watch what Ephesians 5.11 says. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Because God, watch this, will cover to the degree of our confession. This means I ain't got to tell folk what I've been through. I just got to confess that to God. Somebody say, it's going to be some stuff I'm going to take to the grave. But I don't confess that stuff to God. I can't tell Serena all my stuff. God, God doesn't cover that stuff. Somebody say, all you got to do is confess. So, and this is why there's no greater love because his love abounds sin. I'm almost done and my kids can get back on their tablets and their electronic devices. The Bible says Christ died for us. That means God paid a price for his love to pursue us. His love didn't just pursue us. Someone say he paid a price. That, now that's critical, y'all. That means his compassion towards us cost him something. God gave up his only begotten son to get his love to us. Ooh. And here's why this is significant. Notice what the, the, the verse number seven of, of our foundational text says. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person. Though someone per might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. This means God sent his son to die for us even when we didn't deserve for him to make that type of sacrifice. 
I don't care how good you think you is. I don't care what your prayer life look like. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care what titles you got. I don't care how God has blessed you. Somebody say you didn't deserve God's love. And, and the reason why a lot of y'all can't let God's love in your life is because you're too haughty and full of pride. You think what, what you're asking God for you deserve is somebody say, I don't deserve none of that. I don't deserve none of that. That means Christ died for us. Watch this, when we deserve to die. I know we don't like that. Consider what the contemporary English version of Romans 5.12 declares. Adam sinned, and that sin brought death into the world. Now everyone has sinned. So I'm going to say all of us. All and watch this. So everyone must die. Yeah. This means we were destined to die. We deserve to die. But because of God's love, Christ died in our place. Y'all yeah. got to hear what I just said. I was destined to die. I deserve to die. But Christ died in my place. Somebody say he died in my place. Oh, good. Thank you, God. So, so in other words, this is why God's love, there's no greater love, because somebody say his love is sacrificial. This is why foundational text says, watch this, Christ died for us. So that means he died as our penalty. Somebody say penalty. He died as our punishment. Somebody say punishment. punishment. And watch this. He died in our place. Yes. And watch this. Some of the reality is, y'all know they, folk like to say no snitching. Some of y'all won't take no penalty for your mama. Did y'all hear what I just said? Your mama who birthed you. If your mama say take this charge for me, some of y'all say mama I'll see you in 30 years. <laughs> I'm going to put something on your little commissary tab. Y'all ain't even got to die. My mama just said go to jail for me. Y'all ain't going to do it. Some of y'all might, but y'all like y'all freedom too much. Yet because of God's love for us, he gave his only begotten son for us. So I say, what a sacrifice. I says, God, and hear this. God gave his son before we could give God a response. I, I want y'all to catch what I'm saying. God gave his son before we could give God a response. In other words, God loved us before we could love him back. He had no clue who was going to respond to this sacrifice. He had no clue if Pastor Keith was going to give his life for me. He says, before anything, I'm going to give my son before they could even give me a response. Somebody say, what a sacrifice. Before we sacrifice for anybody, I need to know what is in, in it for me. When you going to pay me back my money? When I'm going to get this thing? We might need to sign a little agreement. I'm going to get this thing notarized. Let's go on down. Yeah. 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 Because this going to cost me something. But God says, even before I get a response from you, he loved me. Woo. Somebody say, that's good news. And watch what Ephesians 5 and 2 says, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet sm smelling aroma. This means if God can love us sacrificially in this way, the least we can do is love him back. Yeah. Somebody say that's the least you can do. We are called to walk in love. And watch this. God's sacrifice should cause us to sacrifice ourselves. So, in other words, Christ died in our place, and God is only saying, I just need you to live for me. Somebody say, live for God. Live for God. Many of y'all so raggedy, y'all can't even live for God. This is why Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. In other words, Paul was saying, I'm begging you. Somebody say, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. That by the mercies of God, and somebody say, the love of God, love. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He ain't say you got to die. He ain't say you got to, he ain't say you got to really get up on no, nobody cross. He says a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable God to God, which is the least you can do. Somebody say the least you can do. The least you can do is live for God. God says, I gave up my only son for you. And the only thing I need you to do, somebody say is live for me. Y'all don't want to open up your mouth. You don't want to praise God. You don't want to pray to God. You don't want to lift your hands to God. You want to you want to pick and choose when you want to serve God. And God says, all you got to do is live for me. And here's why there is no greater love. Because somebody say God's love is sacrificial. 
I'm done, y'all. My prayer on this Resurrection Sunday is that we understand that we serve a God that loves us. Tell your neighbor God loves you. And not only do we understand that God's love us, but there's no greater love. Somebody say, you can't love me like God. Yeah, tell your neighbor you can't love me like God. I know you love me, but you can't love me like God. And watch this. Here's why this is critical. Because our revelation concerning God's love would determine our ability to love him back. Somebody say, I just want to love God back. And here's what I wanted us to understand this morning. His love is steadfast. There is no end to his love. There is no end to his love. And watch this. His love abounds our sin. If God is going, God loved me even while I was still sinking deep in sin. And here's the other thing. God loves me. His love is sacrificial. Somebody say it's sacrificial. Before I could love God back, God loved me. And here's what I want us to see something in our text, and I'm going to be out your way. We can go get something to eat. We can do all of that. We can take pictures and look cute this morning because y'all look cute. Watch what verse number nine says. More than then, that having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Somebody say God's love is sufficient. In other words, his love made us right before him. There is no other way. I need y'all to hear me and hear me good because I know we antsy. I know we got kids in this house. But there is no other way that we can be right before God. And here's how we got to be right before him. We've got to accept his love. Did y'all hear me? It's not enough for God to love you if you don't accept his love. Did y'all hear what I just said? That this means I don't want to make God's love in vain because I'll never be in right relationship with God until I'm justified by his love. Somebody say, I got to receive his love. So I'm done this morning, y'all. I know we got a lot of believers in this place. I know we got a lot of people that say I love God and I know he loves me and I'm going to love him back. But not a lot of people allow God's love to embrace them in a degree that God wants them to embrace him. So I want to do two things this morning. Some of them this morning is struggling to believe that God loves them. I want to pray with you this morning. You said because of your circumstances, because of what you're going through, it's hard for me to see God's love active in my life. If that's you, I want to pray with you. Come to this altar. I'm struggling with God's love. Matter of fact, I don't know how to love folk back. Because I don't have a, a good revelation of God's love. If that's you, I want you to come to this altar. And I'm going to say this because everybody looking like we love God. Y'all love God? Ask your neighbor, do you love God? Love God. Yeah, do you love God? serious. Then I want to ask this question. There's somebody who says, I haven't given my life to Christ. I haven't embraced it, embraced God love in this way. If that's you, I want you to come to this altar. I, I want to know him in that way. I want to be in relationship with Christ. I know we can get saved on any day at any time, but what a greater day than on Resurrection Sunday to give my life to Christ. If that's you, come to this altar. I want to be saved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. something to y'all. 
church thing. Once you get saved, you all, you got it all together. We're all working this thing out. So we're just telling God, God, I'm jacked up and I need you to save me. And the other thing I'm saying is that I believe in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. His love was sufficient. That means I don't have to do anything but believe and confess. Jesus paid the price. That's all I'm saying. And then the last thing is, I'm saying that I'm going to live for him. That's it. God says if I can confess that, if I can believe that, then I can be saved. So if y'all can believe that, do y'all believe that this morning? Do y'all confess that this morning? Then y'all can be saved. Can y'all put y'all hands on them really quickly? I'm going to pray with them. Father, we thank you. We honor you, God. Thank you, God, for this Resurrection Sunday. Because you got up, God, we can get up again. So these two ladies have declared that they want to come up out of the grave, that you've paid the price for all of their sin. They're confessing and believing, God, that they're a sinner in need of a Savior, that that Savior is Jesus Christ. And all they're going to do, God, is try their best to present their bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. But God, that's the least we can do for you. So God, thank you on this Resurrection Sunday that two have given their lives to you. And God, your word declares that at when one repents, heaven rejoices. So God, as a reflection of what's going on in heaven right now because of these two lives, let us clap our hands. Let us give God praise for their salvation. Hallelujah. The church family after the service embrace these two ladies and it is digging and sending. I want y'all to pay attention to this young lady digging and sending. Can you raise your hand and minister LaShawn? Where are you? Those two ladies, please see them after the service. We just want to get some information from you. We just want to help you in this journey because nobody should do salvation alone, okay? So we love you and we thank God for you. Let's celebrate them again. And then lastly, before I ask Pastor Cole to come and take us further in the service, somebody might be saying, I've been coming for a while. I want to be connected to this church. I want to be a member of this church. If that's you, just lift up your hand. I want to be a member. I want to be connected to the way church in Tampa Bay. Hallelujah. Hey, if you got anything out of the word this morning, give God a hand and have a prayer. Sunday. So I'll try it again and pretend like I skipped that first part. That you know, the, it's a do-over. That's what they used to call. It. It's a do-over. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. I promise you, it's not for me. I'm just sitting here and thinking about how many times, you know, like I said, I gave my life to Christ. I'm
up. He was still in it in that moment. And I found myself arrested on that day. It was an easy open and shut case because he left his car at the scene of the crime. Um, I didn't say we were smart criminals. I didn't, know that, I didn't even know I was doing a crime at the moment um, until it felt like it was too late. And the reason why I say that on today is because the saying is birds of a feather flock together. So if you don't have a church home, you may say you with God, but if you look at all the people around you, if they're not connected to a church home, and they're not getting the word like this on a weekly basis, and I'm not saying we're not the church that say you got to be here every Sunday or we're going to kick you out. But if you're not in, next to people and connected with people that are constantly pouring into you, I'm sorry, I got to look at you like birds of a feather do what? have an opportunity to join in at a church that we're seeking after God. How many times are you going to go on, on a Sunday like today and the pastor says, I still got stuff to get together. That's honesty. Who wouldn't want a pastor like that? And more importantly, he says, I'm a shepherd. You know why he says that? Because he don't mind getting dirty. I promise you he don't. Sometimes I call him like, Pastor Keith, you ain't got to do that. But he doesn't mind have an opportunity on today, regardless if you're watching online but or if you're in the house. Right now, you have an opportunity. If you need a church home, you can just raise your hand. We just we want to connect with you because we don't want to leave you out there in a situation that you may not even realize you're about to be in. So you have that opportunity. I know it wasn't by accident that God said that. So guess what? The doors, we're going to keep them open. If you need to talk to one of us after service, please do that. So are there any first-time visitors here right now? You can raise your hand. We want to give you a couple. Yes, gentlemen, you see those hands? Please pay attention to those hands, gentlemen. They're handing you a visitor card. We also have some uh, gifts for you after service, I believe. We're so grateful that you worship with us on here, all the people that are watching online. We invite you to come and join us again. Don't let it just be a resurrection Easter Sunday that you come. Um, but we will also give you that small token of appreciation. If you have a chance, please fill out that visitor's card and you can drop it in the offering basket because we want to be able to stay in contact with you. All right. A couple of quick announcements. Guess what? On next week, because this is a serving church, we have our spring festival at Shaw Elementary. Amen. Last week, we were outside inviting people to church and we're thanking God that people April 6th, from 11 to 1 p.m., we'll be partnering with NOVA University once again, and they will be providing health care screenings. We anticipate hundreds, as we usually do, at minimum about 500 people that we deal with on that day. So we need as many volunteers as possible. Is that all right? And it will be sent out via email, so please sign up. We're going to be having our Walmart goods out on that day. But I ask you something else. How many people got some extra clothes that you ain't wore, you just keep looking at? All right, I need you to make sure those are washed and clean. Bring those with you on Saturday. If you have some lightly used clothes, bring those with you on Saturday. No undergarments. We got that taken care of. That's all right. All right, praise the Lord. I didn't seen it before, so y'all see that from somewhere else. That was your blessing. All right, amen. So that's for next week, next Saturday. You'll see the email. Please, please, we need your help. Like I said, we're expecting hundreds on that day. Also, we want you to go ahead and be connected with our app want to improve our communication and engagement as a church. And one way we can do this is we plan to promote the goal of our new church app. How many people have downloaded the new church app? Amen. That means that not everybody. Somebody go ahead. You can see the little barcode up there. You'll have an opportunity to sign up and connect with our church app. We were asking for 100% of our members to download the app because there's so many things in there and ways to communicate. Also, we have an important church meeting our church is in the season of transition, so we want to make sure that everyone is aware of the progress and the next steps. So with that being said, we'll be having an important congregational meeting immediately following worship service on next week, next Sunday. Somebody say next Sunday. So we're going to make plans to uh, definitely be there. Also, on today, on today, we have uh, the Easter Resurrection Sunday goodie bags in the fellowship hall. Is there in the fellowship hall or did we bring them to the back? In the fellowship hall still? Okay. Um, in the fellowship hall for all the children in attendance, uh, make sure you pick up a bag in the rear of the church following service. And so we're going to bring it up front. Praise the Lord. That makes sense to me too. Amen. Um, but right now, as they're getting prepared for that,
that we're preparing for offering. We have so many different ways that you can give at the way church of Tampa Bay, but we do it this way. Somebody say 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And you don't have to repeat after this. You know, we must decide in our hearts how much to give. That's how, we, that's how we've reached the goal that we've got to this far, deciding in our hearts and not to give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a chill for giver. So what does that mean? That means I'm not going to ask you to give $100 if you don't have $100 because you might have 1000 So we want you to give the best you can, but decide in your heart, not the wicked side of your heart, the good side of your heart. So you can give via Cash App. You can give via the uh, the new app we have. You can give right in there. You can give via our PayPal. You can mail it in. All those things are on your screen. Visitors, if you have those visitor cards made out, we're going to collect those from you, too. We thank you. If you don't have them, you can also give that to an usher at the end of service. We have ushers. Remember, we were talking about that church app. We have the QR code you can scan in the back. So you got a flyer. You can go ahead and scan it and make it so much easier. So I know it was on the screen to try to try, but we have little flyers back there that you can scan to make sure you get connected with the church app on today. All right. So if you physically have your offering envelope ready, if you didn't give uh, electronically, you can go ahead and lift it up. Our ushers are coming right now. away from our goal, praise the Lord. See, that don't, that, that's not, that, it don't sound like that great, but we're already past 100,000. So 66, we, we, ain't, we got a little bit more to go, I promise you, we can do it together. Remember to mark greater in the comment section. Did everybody have a chance to give on today? stuff, just like Pastor Keith said, we, we just got to hold on to it until God declares it okay. All right, I think that's enough for giving. If everybody can stand. I know we have busy lives. How many people are going to try to come back again on next week? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We would love to have you. I promise you, we're not, we're not selling the seats this week. It's still here for you. to be appreciated, to make note and be appreciated. And as much as we appreciate, I appreciate God for his presence on today. Throughout our worship, throughout our dance, through, through the, the people that, that in the pews, for every person that was here came on one accord to worship a living God. It's one thing for him to die, but he got up. Let's remember that he got up. There's some situations we're still hurting. We ain't got up from, but Jesus got up. So dear Heavenly 
Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. God, we celebrate him on today. The sacrifice that was made for our sins. The cross that he went to. The fact that he died and was buried, but more importantly, that he got up. So we thank you right now, God. God, we give you open access to our lives. That you may attach yourself to some things that we might be able to get up to. God, get us to worship you. Get us to acknowledge your name, God. God, right now, make yourself plain in our lives. Very present. God, we know you're the help. We love you. We thank you once again. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God said amen. One quick announcement. here from Shaw Elementary. Not a first time visitor. I know that just looks like just looks my friend. I know they work at the school. We appreciate you. We're going to be there next week. We're going to be there. We'll see y'all next week. Thank God for you coming out once again. For everybody, remember we have the baskets coming out right now. So if you have children, they can come up and go ahead and grab one. Let little ones. Yes, you may, you may take pictures of them.